Now this game's heating up. Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Today I have my first deck profile for the Targon expansion, which is the Lulu Demacia aggro deck. It's one of the most popular decks right now and has found some early success due to being able to crush unrefined strategies in the meta. This deck aims to play super aggressive turns 1 through 4 and take control of the board with its powerful units and curve. It utilizes very swingy attack turns that, if they go well, snowball to victory, especially with Genevieve as a consistent finisher on top of an already established board. This deck is very similar to how scouts function due to having the same strong early units, so if you like that deck and already have experience, then Lulu Demacia is worth checking out. I want to run through my card choices, explain why they're in the deck, and give you the knowledge to pilot the deck yourself. The code for the deck will be in the description below. Before I get into the deck profile, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. My current goal is just 1000 subs, and I'm less than 100 away, so it would be awesome if you joined. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you want live gameplay of someone who's hit Master Tier 3 times already and going for the 4th. With that, I hope you enjoyed this deck profile. Alright, starting off we should check out the curve and notice that it is very very early game sided. You basically have to win by turn 6 or 7 if you have multiple Genevieves or you kind of run out of steam. So this is a very all or nothing kind of deck, however the pressure tools that it has to actually compete against other decks turns 1 through 4 is absolutely insane. It's so overpowering if the opponent doesn't have the proper units or defensive removal tools to actually deal with your board. So we're going to start off with the one cost. We run nine one cost units, three of each of Scythria, Fleet Feather Tracker, and Flower Child. Scythria because she's just you know a standard 2-2 body, she's the one you want to see the least out of the other two. Fleet Feather Tracker is probably the best one, depending on what two drops you have to synergize with him and take control of the board as early as attack turn two. So Fleet Feather Tracker, when you summon another ally, grant him Challenger. This helps you snipe out other problematic units that your opponent is playing early, along with being able to buff Tracker with like a uh, barrier or buff him up to keep him protected so you get favorable trades uh, as early as possible. Next we have 3 Flower Child, now she's a new inclusion from the Targon expansion. When she's supported by any unit, she permanently gains plus 2 plus 0. It does not go away at the end of round, this is a permanent buff and she can kind of ramp up and get out of control as well. So Flower Child is really good with War Chefs in this deck, because War Chefs will also give her a temporary buff, makes her really beefy early, especially on attack turn 2, it's really hard to deal with. Uh, another early support unit is Young Witch, which I'll get to later, that also synergizes with Flower Child. Moving right along, we have Triple Blinding Assault. I'll be honest, I was skeptical about this card at first, but Valor is actually really really good. So you're basically just playing a 2 mana 2-1 two that has both Challenger and Scout. Now this seems kind of weak, it's like Fleet Feather Tracker for one more mana, but he has Scout. I guess that's the only difference. However. You want to maximize Challenger as much as possible because of how much it synergizes with support and with like the barrier and other mechanics in the deck. There's a lot of innate synergy, especially if you can get Lulu to buff up Valor or Fleet Feather Tracker. It's just like really, really insane pressure. Being able to target what you want to kill from your opponent's board is a huge privilege that this deck utilizes. So basically we're just maximizing our Fleet Feather Tracker count by adding in another one that also has Scout which can like, you know, test the waters and get to attack first and there's other scouts in the deck, so there's also a little bit of synergy there as well. Next we have Triple Bright Steel Protector. This is probably the best attack turn 2 unit there is if you've already set up your Flower Child or your Fleet Feather Tracker especially because it's 2 mana 3 2 is really good aggressive body. It can match anything that your opponent plays on turn 2 for the most part other than the new broken uh, 2 mana 3 6 that Targon has, but uh, very very good to trade up into things with Fleet Fighter Tracker. It deters opponents from playing certain two cost units. Very very awesome. Next we have Triple Single Combat. Single Combat is really good to just like remove problematic units. It's basically this deck's form of early removal while other decks have Mystic Shot, Black Spear, Vile Feast. This one has to make up for it with Single Combat. Single Combat is really good synergizing with Barrier of course because then you can snipe Barrier off your own unit to kill an opponent's unit. So that works out pretty well. Single Combat also, you know, surprises people. They're just not ready to play around it. You can um, negate like people activating cards on their own units if they're buffs. 
Um, single combat has a lot of uses. It's very flexible, and two mana is a pretty good cost for it uh, because of how much we're trying to limit uh, mid and late game cards. So next we have War Chefs. War Chefs is another broken turn too that uh, Demacia has. Demacia just has a plethora of early game units that you can just slap into any deck. And War Chefs is uh, feeding that pack with their food because the, their support is so good on turn two that, that that plus one plus one actually goes a long way. You wouldn't think so until you play out the deck you know, numerous times and just feel how much pressure he gives. He also, like I said earlier, synergizes with Flower Child to give her you know, a permanent buff on top of her temporary one, making her really hard to deal with. Next we have Triple Young Witch, another new card from Targon. Now she is elusive, so that means if you play her on two, your opponent's probably not going to have an out unless they play an elusive of their own, like Young Witch or Green Glade Duo. So she's basically always going to get her attack off, and when she supports an ally, so she's on the left of them, uh, letting them attack afterwards, she gives them plus one attack and quick attack, which is also really good on turn two. You basically turn um, any of your one costs into Lucian, uh, and that's really good, of course, with Fleet Feather Tracker and Flower Child. So you can see where all these synergies start to, you know, snowball each other and help each other out. Next we have Laurent Protégé. So this is also maximizing the challenger keyword. We want to be able to kill our opponent's units. We want to decide what blocks and not give the opponent the opportunity. So he's good when you buff him up with Young Witch, War Chefs, um, Bright Steel Protector. You can buff him up with Lulu. All very, very powerful. Speaking of which, we have Lulu, the Targon Champion. So, also, fun fact, my favorite champion from the new expansion. She has so much innate power and so much um, synergy built around her that it's just so fun to play Lulu decks. So basically, if she gets... Um, if allies support each other three times at all, she is immediately leveled up. So she can level up while in deck, and then you can play her already leveled on turn three. Another effect that Lulu has is supporting her ally, making it a 4-4 or a 5-5 when leveled up. So this is absolutely bonkers when you let Laurent Protégé become a 5-5, Young Witch as an elusive 5-5, so you can get cheesy, you know, direct damage in. Uh, and you kind of just take over the board with early 5-5s or 4-4s four if she's not leveled up yet. Next we have two Relentless Pursuits. This basically helps you end the game if you're already in a winning state. Uh, you can also use this to uh, punish your opponent for playing a bad attack turn. And then you can like play Relentless Pursuit, get your attack in, uh, pass, and then open attack again, which is just a lot of pressure. It has a lot of flexibility. You can use this a lot of different ways to try to end the game or uh, try to get some resources out of your opponent. Next we have the other champion, uh, Triple Zed of course. Zed is immensely powerful if you support him through anything because he already has quick attack and he summons a shadow that has his stats. So if you buff him with Lulu, he you'll have two 4-4s. Four or if she's evolved, you'll have two 5-5s five to work with, both with quick attack. So getting these two off in succession and neither of them getting removed is basically game over going into turn five and six when you're able to end the game with Genevieve, which we'll get to very shortly. Next we have Double Fuzzy Caretaker. He is pretty okay. You can remove him for like anything else. He's just something to play on turn four. He has good stats. He synergizes with support stuff. He's uh, actually deceptively hard to get rid of especially if you already commit your attack with him because then he's going to get his plus three HP and just be a nuisance for your opponent to deal with. And next we have the single card powerhouse uh, Genevieve. She is the most consistent game ender with these kind of zoo-ish aggro decks like Scouts or like Lulu Demacia where you really get rewarded for having multiple units on the board and then playing her. This leads to the game plan of attack as much as you can and when your opponent attacks just take the damage you don't need to trade because you are going to win out as long as you keep your units which ends up being like a primary strategy for the deck so keep that in mind if you have her in hand it's okay to take damage because hp is a resource just like anything else in order to commit to your board and have a really big swing turn on like attack turn six or you can set her up defensively on turn uh, turn six if you're on defense and then play another one on seven you just kind of win or you can use it to deter opponents and then uh, open attack the next turn she's very very flexible surprisingly she's not as one-dimensional as you think just reading her card 
And that's it for the list. I wanted to provide a good foundation for the deck. I encourage players to mess with the numbers and put in whatever little twist they like. Taking out the two fuzzy caretaker and adding in some spice is a good place to start. And that about wraps it up for the deck profile. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context on why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, looks like we got some kind of Demacia Freljord beatdown stuff. Four, four unique champions is uh, pretty new, but we'll see how it goes. So with this hand, I want to keep one of these one costs or two of them. I think I'm going to pitch both the Cythrias and try to hard mulligan for uh, my support synergy. So I'll be get, getting rid of Blinding Assault as well. <laughs> I end up getting more one costs, but this is pretty good. Cause I can play child on one and witch on two. Stop eating or no more walkies. Basically, no matter what he plays here on turn two, I'll be able to trade into it and get a free attack off with young witch. Is that a familiar frog? Oh my gosh! Go on, Rib. We'll do witch. No, do this. Hello. Hello. So she turns into a four-two with quick attack. Gotcha. Uh, Trapper is fine, so we're going to play Fleet Feather and then try to use Quick Attack to kill him next turn. The trail. We'll take the 3 here, or we can block defensively. He probably has Frostbite in hand, so actually trying to take that resource from him right now is good. Because if he doesn't use it now, he's going to use it on my Tracker next turn anyways. Yep, this works. This effect is just for the turn, so I'll still be able to kill him. Is it adventure time, you guys? What do you say, Glow? That's yes. But you can see how on turn four, I'm already like out of stuff in my hand. That's just how the deck plays out. This way. So I'll do like that. We got the good trade, and he is almost halfway dead. Humans, make them flat. When I'm summoned, if you behold an 8-cost, grant me a regen. So it has regen, there's an 8-cost card in his hand. 8-cost or higher. So we can just play another body here and then have two spell mana for next turn. So we'll just play this. My shield is yours. I don't really care about this unit. I'm just going to ignore it. Yeti, we can kind of ignore that too. So I'm going to play Fuzzy Caretaker here. Snow Sunder smash all the things! Another big dude. Little's cross easy! Take five, six, that's fine. This is where Genevieve would be really good. Laurent's protege. Not as good. So we'll do this, on, give him quick attack, he will also give something else plus three, so let's give that to Flower You're Child, so then we can attack I some other you. stuff at the end. Oh, friends, this is pretty early loaded Bring damage, so it threatens him to block early. Puts him at five. Let's do... I kind of want this thing to die. This tracker's gonna die anyways and not do too much for me, so I could probably snipe this with single combat and just get control of the board. If I single combat anything else, I miss out on damage. And he's at 5 HP going into turn 7, his attack turn, so... It might actually be too hard for him to catch up. We'll see though, he has to play like a couple things this round to outpace my my board. That'll work, that'll do it. It's going to be kind of annoying. We'll play another caretaker. Three. Four three. Alright. No mercy for cowards. Show me your best. So we will block 
kind of want to keep that. I guess we have to block right here. Puts me at one. He could have a damage booster, so we could also block right here because Protégé will still live. Another fine scar. It is easy, see? All right, so we pretty much have to open attack here. Oh, Genevieve's so nice too, though. So there's two plays I can do. I can play her over something else and try to buff up my elusive to just end the game. I think I kind of need to go for that. So let's take out the tutu. I'll defend these forests to the end. The winter's claw will pass. So the only way he survives now is with like a frostbite. So let's do this and take out his defending resource first. Kill Braum for free. I don't want or need to attack with Balor there, so I'm just going to keep it as a body this turn in case I want to challenge his bigger units. Which I think I will go for. So I'm going to lead with this guy buffing Young Witch into 5 attack that is already lethal by herself. Then I will attack here, 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 and I was going to drag his strong minions over so I have advantage. The only out to that elusive body is a Frostbite and he had 4 mana remaining so I knew I had him. So you can clearly see the power of this deck. Even if you run out of resources, there's just so much pressure on the board and so much like variation in plays that you can do depending on what you draw. But the deck is really fun. Uh, I didn't get to showcase like Lulu or Zed. I won literally based off of units. So I highly recommend trying this deck out, playing it, you know, five, ten times, see if you like it. Try all the opening hand combinations that you can get and just experience it for yourself because this is a really fun deck. And if you like it and you don't like the feel of Lulu, try to transition to Scouts because they are another deck that plays very similar and you get to play around, you know, MF and Lucian and Senna or Quinn, depending on which variation you're running. Super, super fun either way. But that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out since I'm still trying to grow. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters.